Hello and welcome back to the Villa View Discussion Show. On today's show, joining me and Dan Bodell is Reese Lloyd and Daniel Raza. The topics we're going to be discussing today are the Austrian pre-season training camp, Joe Bennett's future at the club, how big a role has Jack Grealish got to play next season, and of course, still in Petrov. So first of all, the players have been in pre-season the past week. They've been out in Austria on their training camp where they played GAC and won 8-0. Can we read anything into the pre-season, Dan, the fact that not many youth's gone, Dan Raza? The friendly itself, obviously, it's it's nice to see Villa getting all them goals. And it's nice to see players like Joe Bennett uh, whacking in free kicks. I think the problem is with that, the only way the only way you can really assess any players in that game is looking at players like Joe Bennett who have managed to score from set pieces. It was a team of amateur players, wasn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah. But it is nice to see that the, that the players are gelling together. Reese, do you think more youth should have actually gone out there? Because they didn't take anyone, really. I know the youth are off to play in Belgium and Holland, but surely some of them, like Khalid Abbo, for example, top scorer in the Hong Kong series a few months ago, and he didn't get taken. I feel like he should have been given a chance. Well, the thing is, I think last season, I did go to a few in the 21 games, there were, there were some decent talents in there. I think there's, you know, there are a few players who, I think, to be honest, look into it last season, and how badly we were playing. There are a few players who can make the step up. Um, Abdo's one of them. Probably say Andre Green would be a great shout as well. But at the same time, if you're not going to use them next season, because you are going to need experience in there, it's, it depends on how much you're going to try and blend them in. One thing that I know, I don't know if we can read into it, but the fact that Andrew Bakuna was sent home with a slight injury. I don't know if they're making a mo- mountain out of a mo- molehill there. But to me, I don't know if that suggests that he is injured or if he's not, because Amarvi still got a slight knock. But he was over in Austria, wasn't he, Dan Bodder? Maybe Bakuna tripped over his Champions League ambition oh, no. uh, uh, himself. I don't know. <laughs> I think he probably he probably is injured. I've not heard of anyone coming in for him at the moment, despite yeah. his, his lofty okay. ambitions. I mean, like you say, Amavi Am- 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 went. But did he get, Am- Am- get injured whilst we were there, or was he injured? I think he's still struggling for fitness, um, okay. for obvious reasons. Am I right in thinking Bakuna got injured whilst, whilst he was there and got sent yeah. home? Yeah, apparently. But a lot of people, a lot of people online are suggesting that it's not it's clear cut, but we don't know that, obviously. We've not seen him linked with anyone, so I'd be shocked if he was anything other than the fact that he's injured, because there's pl- other players who are in re- rehabilitation, isn't there, like Adama Traore, so it's probably best that he goes back to Bodymore and gets the proper treatment, because the facilities are probably better at, um, at Villa at Bodymore Heath, and they are going to be on this training battle. I think as well as that, um, the likes of him, we don't know what's going to be promised to them next season. We don't know if they're going to be able to give him any game time. We don't know if they're going to actually be leaving the club this summer, Reece. So, do you think that some of those players are on their last chance and that it is a big chance for them out in there? I think the whole squad is their last chance, to be honest. I think other than, I'm, I'm going to be quite brutal. I think other than Amar V and AU, I don't think there's any player really should consider themselves comfortable um, and really performing at a, a higher level. Um, you've got your obvious ones. Yeah, you could go on all day about Richards, Lescott, Bakuna and Gabby. Um, obviously, it is a fresh slate, but it's whether, you know, say if Mika Richards puts on the shirt next season as a fan, are you going to want to get behind him, obviously he's wearing the, the claret and blue, so you are, but some players are going to have to do a lot more than others for me to to, to give them any, any sort of credit, really. Realistically, can we actually shift all these players? I think it'll be difficult because I think that people who are on the Premier League wages, like Hutton, like Gabby, they're not going to get that kind of wage elsewhere, so I think they'd be more comfortable sitting on their, sitting on their contract than they would be getting a move for lesser money. Going back to what Reese was saying, I think there is going to come, become a point where we're going to have to trust Roberto Di Matteo in his judgment. And if he chooses to u- use Richards or use Gabby, we are going to have to get behind them because we can't have an atmosphere like we had at Villa Park. Yeah. And, and, and rightly so. We can't have an atmosphere like, like, like we did last season. Anyone who pulls on the shirt next season, we, we cannot be booing our own players, even if it is Lescott, even if it is Gabby. We're going to have to trust Roberto Di Matteo and, and get behind them, in my opinion. Dan Raza, do you think that it is just a case of clean slates for them all, even the likes of Gabby, and see what happens? I mean, how many clean slates are we supposed to give Gabby and Bonlo? I mean, we, uh, we've heard this so many times. Uh, there's so many times where we've looked at Gabby and Bonlo and we've gone, all right, well, this season maybe it's going to be a little bit better than him. It's better for him, sorry. Uh, we said it after Paul Lambert came in. We said that maybe he wasn't suited to Lambert's style of play. Um, Lambert obviously went, went and moved on. Under Tim Sherwood, still no, no improvement. Uh, I think the thing with Gabby Egbonlahor is he is Villa through and through, and it's good to have that about him. But when you consistently don't perform for that many seasons, 
can you justify continuing to give somebody a chance like that? Uh, and I'm not so sure, sure about that. His returns haven't been good enough. Perhaps in the championship he'll do a little bit better. Uh, but, uh, I mean, as, as Dan Bardell said, uh, it might be quite difficult, obviously, trying to move him on. Um, so we're moving, shifting forwards now into the rest of the pre-season. We've mentioned Joe Bennett and the fact that he scored two free kicks against Gak. I thought the idea that maybe we could move him higher up the pitch into more of a winger position. Dan Bardell, I know you've sort of got a view on this as well. Do you think that that's the best way we can obviously use him? Because to me, whenever I've watched him, he's not very defensive-minded. But when going forward, he seems quite confident. First off, I think that we will need, obviously need two capable left-backs to get through yeah. those those 46 games in the Championship. So I think having Amavi and Bennett would be as strong as we could yeah. hope to be in that position, really, going into the Championship. I think when Bennett first came into the team, he was a bit naive. I think he was in a struggling team. But he still tried to play football where maybe there were some times when he should have just been clearing his lines. But yeah, I think he is a good footballer and I think he can play further forward. But I think the time he spent on loan in the Championship, I'm hoping he might have wised up a bit defensively and toughened himself up. But I think he's definitely got a role in the squad. And yeah, maybe he can play in midfield. The only thing is, I would say both Ali Sissoko and Jordan Amavi are miles ahead of him in terms of class at left back. But perhaps he'd be worth trying out in midfield. I know when he came on a couple of times last season, he looked decent there. But whether or not he's going to be able to provide that sort of class all the way throughout the championship, I think he'd be a move backwards rather than forwards. Once again, if he's a player that stays, he's worth a chance. But ahead of Amavi or Ali Sissoko, uh, no thank you. Another player that's got a big season ahead of him is Jack Grealish, who's had an off-season after bursting onto the scene, hasn't he, Dan? First off, I don't think, I think if we're going to, well, we are obviously going to keep him and we, we should rightly keep him because he, yeah. he's one of our best players. We've got to play him in his right position. He's not, not a winger, he's a number 10. We've got to play him off play him off the striker like, like Tim Sherwood did because that's where you'll, you'll see the best of him. For me, I think it's good news that he's staying. I, th- I don't think we can, for example, if we sold Grealish, we are not, I don't think we're going to be able to buy in a better footballer than him. So him pledging his future and he, see, he seems up for it and I think, we, obviously, we're going to talk about Petrov later, but I think Petrov being there has made a, made a big difference to him. He seems to have taken some inspiration from Petrov with the words he was saying on the official site the other day. And I just think he's he's got his head screwed on. He, he does love Villa, and he, him staying can only be good news for us, in my opinion. It is make or break for Jack Grealish. Um, I agree with Dan completely. I think he's one of our better players. You, you see his ability. You know, he's, you know. I mean, the semi-final against Liverpool was absolutely outstanding. Uh, there's been a couple of games and glimpses where he came on against Blues. I thought he, he turned the game on its head and, and won us the game, to be honest, I thought he was that good. Um, but it's, it's up to him now to keep that consistency levels up. Uh, it, it, with him, it's purely about consistency. If he can be at a level of consistency and perform and, 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 and prove his potential this season, then he could be you know, he could be a vital, vital part of our future. If he hides behind the shadows again this season, doesn't perform and, and, and kind of doesn't make an impact... Then I, I, you know, I do worry for him because you know we, we could have another Lee Hendry on our hands where you know the money gets to the heads, which which I don't think I think under a, a proper manager under someone like RDM who's gonna who's gonna I'm hoping he's gonna nurture him as a player and as an individual. Um, I'd, I'd love him. I'd love to see see him have a better season, and, I, and I'd like to think that he will. The thing with Grealish is he, we have to keep him at all costs. I think the guy's talented. He's, he's incredibly talented. I mean, what, one thing I've got to say first of all, mentally, is the guy needs to grow up a little bit. I mean, he's he's around about our age, Matt. Right. The thing yeah. is, the guy has obviously gone through some very tough times at a team where it was very, very turbulent. And last season, he was very difficult for him to be consistent. And then at the same time, I think he struggled a little bit maturing. Um, obviously, there was quite a few times where he did things which didn't look too well in the press. And I think he needs to do a little bit less of that this season. Yeah. Uh, and I think perhaps as a player, there's a few things that he needs to sort out, but that's because he's young. I think what I'd like to see him do a lot more of next season is pulling the trigger. I think that was pretty much the, the, the worst thing about him last season. He made some very fantastic runs, but then at the, at the end of it, he never really tried to shoot, and he looked a little bit confused, perhaps a little bit unconfident. Uh, but I think really if he starts to pull the trigger a little bit more and gets a little bit more confident with his shooting, I think we have a real player on our hands. And I think he could rip up the championship. He was fantastic at Toulon as well. Tommy Elphick tweeted a few years ago that he can't believe Grealish is wearing his shin pads the way he is. <laughs> And the hairstyle. Nothing wrong with slip back hair, as me and Dan can tell you. There's nothing wrong with having slip back hair. How about the shin pads, though? He needs to sort that out in the championship. I don't know. He's, he's, he's not had any massive injury or injuries touch wood so far wearing them. I'm going to make a massive, massive shout about Grealish. I reckon 
if he stays clear of injury, yeah. I reckon when four four two do the end of season awards for the football league, I reckon he could win best player in the football league. I'm st- stick my neck out and say that. That's bold. That's bold. bold. That's worth a tweet. I'm going for it. If he stays fit, I think he could go on and be the best player in the championship next season. I think with a bit of confidence and a better team around him, people to look up to. Because you've got to remember last season as well. There was literally no one to look up to. Nobody at all. And he had a lot of injuries. He was injured in pre-season. And the team never really got going. And every time he gets the ball, people, I think people at sometimes expect too much of him. I think next season, with the right manager, which I think he's got, and the right coaching staff as well, I think he'll go on and have a massive season for us. Rishi gasped. No, I agree with Dan. I think... Well, do I agree? I, I, I think that potentially it's a year, it's a year too early for him. Let's be honest, the past two years when he's, been, when he's came into the team, he's had absolutely no direction from any standout professionals, really. He's been in a, in a squad full of you know people who've been playing up. He's had no direction. I'd love to agree with Dan, but I don't think I've seen enough on a consistency level to say that he's going to do that. But if he if he pulls out the stops and performs at a level that I know he can do and keeps it at that level, um, he could do. But it's where he's going to it's where he's got in his locker to do that. I'm just hoping that as as Dan said, the change in coaching staff and the change in uh, in manager uh, affects him for the better. Really, Petrov's massive. If you look at his tweets with Petrov, it's literally like he's playing with his hero, it seems. He's tweeting photos of him together every day. And Petrov will have put his arm around him and probably said all the things I've, I've just said. I think if Petrov's staying as well, would be massive for him and he's got that guidance. I really think he'll go on this season and have a superb season. So we're moving on from that now to the summer and the signings. We've got Aaron Tishibola in, Pierre-Luigi Gallini and Tommy Elphick. It's all got a bit quiet on that front as a sense, Dan Bodell. So, is it the case of getting rid of who we can now, as Roberto Reta has said? He's told the people who he doesn't who aren't part of his plans that, that he doesn't need them. So, you'd expect that people that have been to Austria, there was people there, obviously because everyone went, who haven't got a future at the, cl- at the club. I'd expect that we need to see maybe at least two move before we get anyone else, anyone else in, I would think. Guzan's a cert, cert to go, especially now we've signed a goalkeeper. Absolute cert. Well, with our squad's over 30 people now, Dan Raza. Who would you pick as six people, for example, that you'd get rid of? Just looking at the right-back situation, obviously we've got Alan Hutton and Leandro Bakuna. Uh, Bakuna obviously doesn't want to be here. And it's a, it's a shame because I actually quite like him and I do think he's quite talented. But I have to I have to pick him to go after after the shambles of last season. Uh, I wouldn't mind keeping Hutton around whilst we search, whilst we search out a younger right-back. Um, I'd probably say Bakuna. I think Gabby needs to go as well. Um, I'm not. I'm not too keen on him being around. Kieran Clark, and I, I don't know if, if I'm going to turn a few heads here. No, but I agree. He, he was the worst offender at the Euros, in my opinion. He was oh, shocking. Awful. Yeah. Awful. I mean, the, the 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 guy basically, he just seems scared a lot of the time when the ball's coming in the back. Uh, Guzan, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ashley Westwood. Oh no! <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no, I knew, I knew, I knew, you, wouldn't, I knew you wouldn't agree with me there. And in opinion. I think there's there's, there's got to be one or two other wingers who didn't perform. Carlos <laughs> Sanchez, sure, he's got to be a cert two guy, hasn't he? No, I love Carlos Sanchez. I think we need to keep him next season. Well, that that guy that guy will be fantastic in the championship. I'm telling you. Oh, I, I don't I think, think he would be. Reef. So it's my, I've struggled to, to name six players I'd keep rather than six <laughs> players I'd sell. Um, in, in all seriousness, I think from our squad, I think the only two established players who I would keep are Marvin, you know, like I previously said. Um, in terms of players leaving, other than them pair, obviously the new signings, and potentially youngsters such as Grealish, I wouldn't turn my nose up to anyone leaving the club, to be honest. Um, I think it's a fresh start, it's a fresh slate. But if I was going to be brutal, I'd go Guzan, Kieran Clark, Carlos Sanchez, Alan Hutton. How many is that? Four. Um, I'll make a double effort to get Guzan out, to be honest. There's your six. I'd be, yeah, then that'd be it for me. Guzan will be, Guzan's going. Yeah. Clark, who I do like, but I think he probably needs a fresh start somewhere. I think he'd be a better footballer yeah. if he was playing somewhere else. I think Villa has dragged him down a bit, to be honest, and he's probably dragged Villa down to an extent as well. So I'd let him go. I would say Hutton, but no, uh, but then we haven't really got any right backs. So. <laughs> I know. We've Hutton, got Hutton Bakuna, just by virtue of his behaviour at the end of last season, less Scott. Probably Gabby. It's going to have to be Gabby, isn't it? But I could, I'm stu- I know it's stupid, and I know it's absolutely ridiculous, but I could quite easily be swayed by Gabby. 
Stain. Stain. I just, uh, I know it's idiotic and I don't, don't like myself for saying it, but there's just something inside me that I will always have a soft spot for him despite his behaviour. It's ridiculous, yeah. I know it is. Stan Petros made this fantastic return back to the first team with so much respect from across the footballing world, so much respect from people outside of football for this magnificent achievement. To me, he's deserving of a contract just for the fact that he'll be a solid person in the dressing room. Players can turn to him like Jack Grealish, as Dan Bardell's mentioned before. Someone that can be a leader, even if he comes up for 10 minutes a game every four weeks or something. I think he's very important. Dan, I know you echo these views as well, don't you, Bardell? So explain how you feel Petro should be used. I cannot see any way now in which he does not get a one-year deal. I don't, I don't see him not, get, not getting a deal. As you say, even if he, d- he doesn't play, just having him around, having him at training seems to be making a difference. I mean, you can see everyone's got a smile on their face at training, which didn't happen very much last season. And I think part of that is due to Petrov. I think he's motivating people when they see what he's been through, that they, they can achieve anything because look at what look at what he's achieved. Like you say, bringing someone on for the last 10 minutes to, to keep the ball, he's clever. He, he looks after the ball, he looks after his teammates, and he knows how to look after himself. Someone like him would be absolutely invaluable and if he came on or started a, a, like a game next season I think that would be the best thing I would, would ever see happen to Aston Villa I don't think even us winning a trophy I don't think anything would get me feeling more emotional than watching him step foot at Villa Park again I tell you what right Petrov obviously is, is, is a hero because I mean the, 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 what he's come back from is absolutely you know it's, it's absolutely amazing how he's managed to do it and to get himself back in shape you know, he's an inspiration to everybody and obviously grew up watching him. Um, but the thing is, right now, we don't know just how good he can get back to. I mean, we don't know what sort of level he can get back to. I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't say that we shouldn't give him a contract because I think it would be fantastic to see him play next season. I think it would be great, even if it is for a couple of minutes. But look, we gave Robert Perez a contract a, co- a couple of years ago and the guy <laughs> barely played, right? So... I don't see the issue with bringing Petrov back in. I'm going to be quite controversial. I think, I think obviously, the story of him making a return is absolutely unbelievable. Um, it's a credit to the man himself. Um, you know, he's, to make that kind of return is absolutely superb. And I think every Villa fan is happy to see him, you know, in, in condition and, and doing that. Um, in regards to him playing, I don't know if we will be able to. I, I mean, I can't say that I watch him in the pre-season friendly. I think we'll find more out in the next couple of weeks wherever we can. Um, what you got to remember is when, even when he was in his latter years at Villa, he was very slow. Um, technically, he, he, you know, gifts, he, can, he, he can spray a ball, but if he's, if he's slowed up any further, is he going to be able to keep the pace of the game? I don't know. Um, I, do, I do think he definitely needs to be in the dressing room influencing in some way or another. I think he just, you know, there's, there's nothing negative that can, get, can be gained out of that. Whether that's playing, I'm unsure. I think we'll have, we'll have to only wait and see if he... We'll have to, well, we'll have to trust in Di Matteo's judgment whether he feels like he can play. He does need to have an involvement in, in, the, in the dressing room. Whether that's playing, I'm not sure. Um, but again, it's all dependent on, on, on kind of what performance he puts in on his return and if he's quick enough, because he was slow when he, when he left Villa, uh, to, to keep the pace, really. Do you not think that he's a player that's like never relied on pace, like Gareth I Barry? Think he has. So, you, so you don't think that... I'd, I'd think that not having pace isn't going to make too much of a difference. Well, yeah. I, I mean, Gareth Barry never had pace, but he used to go forward and he used to, he used to, be, he used to, be set, you know, he used to go forward and... And, and, and you know, school goals from outside the box, things like that. I think Stam's obviously. I mean, he's, I, to be honest, he was never for me. He was never the greatest player. He did his job brilliantly though uh, under O'Neill, and he, he, he knew what he, he had to do. Um, maybe not so much pace, but just general, just keep it with the, with the game and the fitness levels of the game. If he's able to do that, then that's absolutely fantastic. And if he's able to kind of be that player in the midfield, you can you know nullify a game for say with one or two nil up and just sit in front of the defence and, and, and play those balls, brilliant. But at the same time, I think, obviously, you know, we talk about Gabby and sentiment. We've got to be careful. We don't just, you know, look at it through sentiment with Petrov. Make sure we're doing it for the right reasons, which behind closed doors, 100%. Playing wise, we've got to be very careful what we do. But I trust that Di Matteo will make the right judgment um, and it will do the right thing, really. But obviously, I haven't seen Petrov play recently. I don't know what kind of level he's at. I'd love it. To, I'd love it to, I'd love him to, to start and be absolutely fantastic, don't be wrong. But it's all dependent on where he's at at the moment, really. You can't be any worse than what was going down last season. You can't be worse than Carlos Sanchez now. I think we have to say that, obviously, first of all, that Roberto Di Matteo is under no obligation to sign Stadion Petrov up to a playing contract. Um, and I, I want to see him back. But, you know, what will people be saying if we're holding a game 1-0 up 
we bring on Stylian Petrov for the last five minutes and he loses the ball in midfield because he can't keep up with the pace of the game. We mm. don't know whether that's going to be... We don't know whether or not he's going to be able to put up with that just yet. And I think we need to just yeah. keep that in mind. We all want it to work. There's not one Villa fan who, who can tell you that they don't want it to work. They'd love him to come back and perform. But it, it's just it's whether he can. And, and but I, I suppose the only way you're going to find out is if you let him play in the championship and give him a chance. But it, it, again, I, I, I do have trust. I, for, for the first time in a long time, I probably, you know, when we're part of the table in 10 games, I'm over saying this, but I do have trust in, in IDM's judgment in terms of whether we'll be able to bring him back because. I think the, you know, for the first time we've actually brought all his staff with him. We've got a solid background. So if he feels that he's ready, then I'll, I'll trust his judgment. That's, I think, we've covered every single area here in this show today. So thank you for all joining us today. First of all, Reese, thanks for coming on last minute. As such. No worries. No worries. On. Hope to see you back on the fan cams this season. Will do. Will do. And, of course, Dan Raza as well for coming on. Cheers. Always a pleasure. And the wonderful Dan I got thanks this week. I didn't get thanks last time. <laughs> I made sure I emphasised <laughs> forgot now. You're there in your bedroom. As per everyone else's, I think, actually. Today. I know, yeah. My bedroom's a bit more feminine than everyone else's, though, unfortunately. <laughs> it can't get much worse than the orange background. <laughs> no, so true. Thanks for all joining us today. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you're dropping us a <clears> like <throat> below on the video and also comment on what you made of it. What do you make of the guys' judgments today? Do you agree with Dan's biggest bold statement we've heard so far on these discussion shows? And do you agree about the idea of getting Petrov in the club on a contract? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to the channel and head over to our social media channels, the Villa View underscore. So this is the first ever Villa View question and answer session where we're just going to give, get a few questions in. I'm going to try my best to answer what you really want to know. What you want to know about the club and everything else that is going on at the moment with Aston Villa Football Club. 